So there are about two triangles in the question that you can use in order to come up with the value for beta. Okay? So, first, I'm not sure how you did it, but I'm going to give a name to this point here. So I'm going to call it point D. Okay? I'm doing that because I need to have a name. I need to have a name for this triangle. Okay? I need a name for it. So I have to, na to give a, a name to that point of intersection. So I'm going to call it what? Point D. Yes. So, sir, even in the paper, if they don't label it, do we put the label on the diagram? Okay. Yeah. Generally, for your paper, we provide you with everything. Yeah, but for this diagram here, they were supposed to put a name for that point. But if you work it out without it, it's fine. Okay? Maybe you call it an unknown name. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Right. Maybe, I don't know. Like then, we also have, we also have a second triangle, which is that triangle. Okay? So we have got those two triangles. I have to use both of them to come to my solution, together with the concept of angle of inclination. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a bit of my, my time. I'll start with method one. Okay, because the question can be done in two ways. So I'll start with method one, with the given diagram, with all the information that's on it. Right, so first thing, we are given the, the equation of line AC. Okay, the equation of line AC is given, so its gradient is positive what? One. What that means is, if AC is perpendicular to BC, it means the gradient of BC is going to be negative one. Remember, if two lines are perpendicular, if you multiply their gradients, you get what? Negative you one. get negative one. From grade what? Eight, Some of you have taught that in grade nine. nine. Okay. Nine. Okay, let's say ten. Nine. Right? So, first, I'm going to determine this angle of inclination. Okay? Now, I can give it any name I want. Okay, fortunately, I'm going to call it CAD, that angle, okay? So M, so I'll start by saying M is equal to 1 for, for AC. In fact, let me just write MAC nicely. So I'll put in my substitute there. MAC is equal to 1. Where am I getting that from? From the what? Equation. MAC means the gradient of AC. It's a 1. 1 is the coefficient of x there. Yes. So, what, the, what that means is I can determine tan of C A D. This must be equal to what? 1. one. Okay? From tan theta equal to m. So, C A D will be equal to shift tan of 1, which will give me 45. So, this angle is 45 degrees. Okay? Now, this angle is going to be 90. Okay? Why? Okay, I don't like the diagonal. That's as I said. I wish this point was given a name so I could easily name that angle. Yeah. But here I'm going to say A, angle A, C, B. You can also call it A, C, D. It's equal to 90 degrees. My reason, AC is perpendicular to BC. Does that make sense? Do you see that? <laughs> okay, you want to do that. But I'm going to say it because I'm told that the two lines are perpendicular. Therefore, ACB is 90. Yes, because there is a 90 degree angle here, means that term has to be 90. Okay? If you use angles on a straight line, it's fine. Okay? Now, since I have that, right? I can determine the size of this angle. Okay? Using two ways. Either I can use sum of angles in a triangle. Okay? I can use sum of angles in a triangle. Then I'll get it. 
or I can find this angle of inclination okay. using using the gradient of BC, okay? Which is what I'm gonna do. I'm I'm gonna use angle of inclination because the topic is about angle of inclination. But you can use some of angles in a what? Triangle. Are you following that? Yes. Right. So I'm gonna use angle of inclination. So I'm going to say M C B is equal to minus one. The reason why this is true is because A C is perpendicular to B C. Okay? The gradient of of B C is equal to negative one. Because those two lines are what? Perpendicular. The gradient of MAC is one, therefore the gradient of BC is gonna be what? Negative one. Because of this, I'm going to give a name to okay, let me give it a label. I'll call it uh, I'll call this angle here. Uh, let me call it theta. Okay, let me call it theta. So means my theta is gonna be equal to shift tan of minus one plus. 180 degrees, and that will give me minus 45, minus 45 degrees plus 180, which means theta is going to be 135. So this angle is equal to 135. Okay? Now, it's vertical opposite to that angle, which is going to be ADB. Okay? ADB. Okay? ADB is going to be equal to 135. Do you see that? Yes. Huh? So the next thing now is, is just for me to find the size of this angle. I will show you which angle. So I need to know what is the size of this angle here. That small one there. Remember, I need to get beta. Okay? So, what you find is the C one. C. Oh, never mind. C is 90. And this is angle, it's 45. That one, the up to the x axis. But this small angle here, I don't know what is its size. Okay? So, I need to find the size of that angle. Okay? Now, to find it, to find it, I, okay, uh, okay, this is interesting by the way. I'm going to, to, I hope you can see, I just hope you can see that this is also a triangle. <laughs> That's also a triangle. Okay, look here. The question, it's a high order question, it's it's a problem solving question. You have to what? To think how you can solve it. Okay? Yes. Is it not a triangle? It is a triangle, but there is a problem. You see, you need to know this whole angle. Which we don't what? We don't have. We only have part of it, which is what? 45 degrees. Okay? Yes, my brother. So, can't you find the coordinates of A and then you find the coordinates of A and then you find the coordinates of A? That's why I'm going to. Don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'm going to find the, the, the value of X there. Don't worry. So, can't you find the coordinates of Y and then you find the coordinates of A? That's why I'm going. Okay, okay, so if we did, what if we did the whole one to one sense? Right. Okay, look here. Okay. I'm going to use the metaphor. How many of you know, know cars very well? If you were to, to take, say, three cars, a Mercedes Benz, a BMW, and you take uh, a Jaguar, you open the, the bonnet to check the engines. Are they the same? Huh? 
Are they the same? Are they the same? No. No. But don't okay, all those things are they okay to, to move from point A to point B? So, so look here. A super system. Remember, I'm not doing this question from a memory. Don't forget that. Am I looking somewhere? Do I have a, do I have a piece of paper where I'm checking what I am doing? Huh? Alright, that, that will require a lot of uh, what, will, what can I say? It will require a lot of uh, uh, what can I say? Of course, I can memorize stuff in this but I'm not, I'm not that kind of person who write on a piece of paper and then, and then I'll memorize when I come and do it. Okay, so the way you saw the dad is different from how I saw it. But let's see if we get the same one. Okay. Uh, listen, you you might have done it differently from me. That's fine. But we need to get the same what? Same answer. So let's get there. All right. Uh, can we have one lesson, please? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find this point. There are actually many ways of carrying on to find this angle. But I'm going to show you this interesting way. So to find the point, the value of x there, we use this straight line, okay? What is the value of y at a? It's zero. It's an x-intercept. So I'll say at a, y is what? Zero. Zero. Then I'll put my zero there, then I'll have x plus three, therefore x will be equal to what? Minus three. Right? Are you following that? Yes. So the next thing, now I want you to pay attention now this part. Do you agree with me that this triangle, one which is in green, this triangle here, it's a right angle triangle? Yes. Okay? So that's 90. Okay. And then what is the distance from here? Was x is minus 3 here, x is minus 1. What is the distance from A to the origin? Three. From minus 1 to the origin? One. 1. So, let's use tan theta equal to opposite over adjacent. So, this angle here, so my reference angle, so the vertical distance, which is y, that's my opposite side. The x, x, the x value, that's my adjacent side. So I can calculate that small angle. You're laughing. <laughs> so I'm going to say tan. Okay, I'm going to call it angle DAB. So that would be tan DAB is going to be equal to my, my opposite side, which is one unit. Okay, but I can also just put what? Why? Why there it's minus one? Okay? Remember you did trigonometry on the partition plane. Yeah, you are in grade 11, huh? Like when you did trig as well in grade 12, 11, isn't it? So two grades. Which means, which means you have done a lot of trig. Actually, you have done the bulk of the trig in high school up to this point. Okay? So here I can put minus three. Which means D A B is gonna be equal to uptime of one over three. What is uptime of one over three? One I mean one minus two one one five seven. Yes, that's the one. There is no that this angle can be so big. Oh, I was saying <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. What is your calculator saying? degrees. That's the correct one. You can't get it. The angle can't be of choose. So we did it negative, so we added one to the other side. Okay. Did you work with the gradient? Sorry, not gradient, but the value of 
of uh, the ratio which is positive. With the negative. If you went with the negative, then you get a, an obtuse angle. Then you have to convert to an acute angle. Don't worry. Okay, maybe you are in jail. Okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's bad time to be Okay. Okay. <laughs> Get on. Right? So, <laughs> yes, ma'am. I have an exit for Riley Harrison. Can you kindly come to the front office? Let me get on. Now, I'm going to say this point here, I'm still going to call it point D. Okay? But I might not use it, or I might use it. Okay, so that's still point B. Now, what happens is, if, it, if, you, if you can't figure it out based on the current diagram, right? Can you pay attention? Right? We also might need to do the construction. We can solve the question by construction. What do I mean by that? Well, we can draw a line parallel to the x-axis. Okay? That line will be like this. Okay. So, just draw the line. Yeah, I'm going to try to move with the next step in stretch. Don't try. Okay, please assume that this line is parallel to the x axis. Okay? So, they are what? Parallel. Right? So, this will be method two. Okay? Now, the thing is, if it is parallel to the x axis, it means this angle here is going to be equal to that angle. And what type of angles are those? Corresponding. Corresponding. Right? And then I can also find the size of this angle. Okay. Please assume, okay, let me let me just move that line to the right. So if I move it, uh, I need to click on the line. Okay. Wait, wait, I need to flip on it. Okay. So now. It's supposed to move. Okay, let me move it the other side. So let me extend it. Okay. Alright. Assume that it's perfectly parallel to the x-axis. Alright? It should be. Alright, so this whole angle here, the big one. Okay? If I subtract this one here from it, I'll get beta. So I'm done. Okay? So the only thing that I have to do is, I know that the gradient of BC is equal to minus 1. Am I right? Right? And this was because BC is perpendicular to AC. Right? That's the reason for that. So, if I want to get that angle, maybe I'll call it, okay, let me call it uh, alpha, like let me call the bigger one theta, the smaller one, I'll call it what? Alpha. Okay? So I want to get alpha first. So to get alpha, I'm going to use the gradient of BC. Okay? So what that means is I'll say alpha. It's going to be shift time of minus 1 plus 180. Fortunately, we got this as 135. So we know that alpha is going to be 135 degrees. Okay? 
then the next thing is for me to find the gradient of AB. <coughs> to find the gradient of AB is not that complicated because point A, the y-intercept, and B, they are collinear. Therefore, I can use the y-value here and the x-value there and the y-value there and the x-value to find the gradient. Are you following? Yes. Right? So, at A, we already know, fortunately from method 1, that at A, y is 0, therefore 0 is going to be equal to x plus 3, okay? So, x is going to be minus 3, okay? So, if I want to find the gradient of A, B, the gradient of A, B is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, my y2, it's my choice now to consider the y value at A, which is 0, minus the y value at the y intercept, which is minus 1, all over my x2 is going to be the value there, which is minus 3. My x1 is the value of x here, which is 0. So if I simplify this, I'll get 1 over minus, so I'll get a minus a third. Now, I'm smiling already. So, theta is going to be equal to shift time of minus one. Minus, sorry, minus a third plus 180. What answer do you get? 161,57. 161,57. All right. Then I'll say, therefore, beta is going to be equal to theta minus what? Minus alpha. So this, this is going to be equal to 161,57 minus 135. What answer do you get? 26, 27. Okay. 